So welcome. This is another Hamago hanging out, messing around, and, and geeking out. We're playing with Arduino-like stuff, and today we are doing a build-along with the Lilypad design kit. We're, we did one once before. Paul participated, and uh, and now we're going to do another one. The, the The first one we sort of did one of the earliest exercises, which is simply to connect a battery pack and uh, three, or, uh, three or four LEDs in parallel and get them to work, and we all did. And I'm gonna, I'll sh I will demo that. Awesome. This is a part of my pataphysical studios regalia. I'm going to turn the light off here to make this a little more visible, and so you can see <laughs> that um, it's pretty easy. You just uh, <laughs> sew this uh, battery pack with conductive thread in parallel to the LEDs and a switch, and I'm turning the switch off. In a future one, um, I think we're going to make it a soft. Switch. I'll tell you one of the the problems with the web is that it. I was thinking, well, I need to make a soft switch uh, with velvet. Uh, I mean, with felt. I wonder if they have Paisley felt. So it took me about two seconds to type in Paisley felt, and it only cost um, like two dollars. But the shipping was more than that. It ended up costing me about seven bucks. So a, a later uh, geek out. Um, We'll make a soft switch, but the idea here today is that I've taken an embroidery hoop, I'm going to tighten it, and I put it over this area here to sew on. Um, let me show you what we're going to sew on. So this is the set of stuff from the lily pad design kit that we're going to play with today. So, uh, oops. Somehow or another, I got my camera stuck here. Hang on. Like, fix it. Okay. Hello, hello. Oh, wow. <laughs> I actually uh, found this camera through Angela at SparkFun, who got us started with the Lilypad uh, design kit, and I liked the way her camera worked so much, even though I already had one that um, that I ordered it. I like this one because it's it, uh, self-focusing. What is it? What kind of camera is it, Howard? Pardon? What kind of camera is it? It's called an uh, IPEVO. If you search on that, you will find it. It's about, I think it was about $60. And it, it plugs into your USB. Okay, so um, I've got conductive thread. I've got a needle that you get with a lily pad design kit that's got a great big hole in the eye so that it's easy to thread. Um, you get a, a bunch of these battery packs with the design kit um, and a battery that goes into it. And um, this is what we're messing with uh, today. Um, I, I will remember the name of it, but it's the, it's the tiny Arduino-like microcontroller that, that comes with the Lilypad design kit. It's not exactly an Arduino because it doesn't have a USB port so that you can't really program it, but I think it's a step towards learning how to do that, um, and, and we will do that in the future. This one sort of demonstrates several different um, hard-coded routines. So one of the LEDs will throb heart-like, another LED will blink. We'll, we'll, we'll see, but if um, we zero in on this thing, if you look at it closely,
you'll see that it's got uh, numbers. It's got a um, a zero, one, two, three, and then it's got a plus and a minus. And so each one of these uh, numbered uh, pins is going to connect to one of the LEDs and and do something. Uh, we're not going to program it, but uh, in the future. And then we've got LEDs. So these are very tiny LEDs, but they're pretty bright, as you saw. So I've got a green, a red, a blue, and they come on these sticks. And what you do is you break off break them off of the stick, they just kind of pop off. So you can see I pop one off here. So I've got four of these. So the idea here, now uh, you know I'm taking this straight from the Lilypad design kit tutorial. So you want to do this yourself. Um, Feel free, just go to Lilypad Design Kit, look at their tutorial, and this is the, the last of the of the introductory tutorials. So give me a second here to get things a little bit out of the way and put my work stuff in the field of view here. I'm gonna take this off and put it here. I learned some stuff about sewing last time. I don't really have any experience with sewing, but I learned uh, to be careful to, um, first of all, get a, a, a large enough, a long enough piece of thread to start with, and secondly, um, learned that uh, it's important to make sure that you're not sewing the front of what you're sewing to the back of what you're sewing, otherwise you've got to take all your stitches out and start again. So. I'm I'm going to use this move everything out of my way here so I can move this onto the field. So I think you can see oh it's upside down. So you're seeing what I'm seeing but in reverse. So I'm going to start out by positioning this the way I want it. So uh, let's see. I'm going to put this is the battery pack, and then I'm going to want to put the little microcontroller up so that here's the let's see, here's the plus, and here are the minus terminals on the battery pack. And here's the, the plus and the minus of this. Let me see whether the, what the instructions say is uh, positive pin to positive pin. Okay, so that's kind of set up the way I want it. And then I want to put these LEDs on. So uh, one... Two, uh, you know, I want to remember to put the, let's see, the, the positive, the, the, the positive side is, if, if you put them upside down and the lettering is upside down and the positive side is up, so green, red, yellow, and blue. So that's um, ideally how it's going to look. I forgot to plug in my glue gun, so I'm going to carefully take this and place it elsewhere. Oh, hell, there is no elsewhere. Um, just a second.
Okay, I created a place to put this. Um, so next, I need to plug in my glue gun. Uh, it's going to take a, uh, a minute for it to get hot. Um, I'm sure you all know this, but if you use a glue gun, it's nice to have <coughs> something that's not immediately flammable. This is a piece of wood, uh, so it's not going to catch fire right away. But uh, the glue gun's hot, and it usually comes with a little wire stand, which I have somehow lost. And the wire stand is what keeps it from ending up on things. So I am going to plug this in. I'm going to unplug the soldering iron because we're not going to need it. All right. So um, while we're waiting for the soldering iron, Ken, you're here, right? Yes, I am here. I, I, I'm mostly muted, but I'm here. Uh, okay. Um, I remember uh, last Geek Out, you showed me how to do the random colors at random intervals code. I wanted to show you what it looked like while we're waiting for this to uh, warm up. So hang on a second. Cool. And while we're, while we're doing that, do we think that a bigger, with the purple light conversation, do you think a bigger battery would so, work? I don't know um, how many of you were around when I started this project with a wooden sake box. Were, do, were any of you in this? Uh, this is about build a self-contained RGB unit. Um, it, it, was, it was a pretty small group, I think. Yeah, okay, so that was the, the plain wooden sake box. You can see I've I have painted it, and cool. with Ken's awesome. help, I've got code in the Arduino that changes the colors randomly at random intervals. Cameras don't really pick up the, the color changes uh, too well, but you can see them reflected in the, in the way the, the paint changes. Oh, it's cool, yeah. I, I like it. I like the way it affects the different colors of paint. That's yeah, true. I'm, I'm, I'm using acrylic. I, I I like to use the best possible, so I use Sennelier acry acrylic. But someone gave me Polytech, which is made in Mexico and is used for, for a lot of murals, and that's the really bright um, kind of fluorescent colors you see. Anyway, thought I'd show you this. Um, I'm is that actually, a ping pong ball? This is a what half is a ping pong ball. I cut it with a Dremel as a diffuser. And then inside I've got uh, a battery pack and a teensy Duino uh, that you can see down there that's got a little USB port. And then I've got a, just a little PC board with a couple of resistors and leads from the LED. And so I'm actually going to offer this for sale on Etsy. I'm, this is my, my first, the first thing that I am daring to part with and offer for sale in my new career as a full-time artist. So we'll see whether anybody buys it, but I plan to make more. So I bet you the glue gun is hot by now. Feed it a little glue. Yeah, okay. So, um, I took a stool to make a, a place to put things on, and I wonder whether it makes sense for me to move the camera instead of this. So let's see whether I can get that to, to work. So you can you can see here that I've got it set up and I messed it up a little bit. Uh, pluses and minuses.
I've got things kind of arranged the way I'm going to want them. And so I'm now going to attempt to... The problem with glue guns is that they emit this tiny thread of, of glue that, uh, that gets on everything, but you can take it off later. So just a little tiny touch of glue on this. I guess I can put a bigger one here. It's really... Uh, I'm committed once I, I, I do this. So here we go. Then I'm going to take this and glue it down. Um, I have learned that hot glue is really the best thing to work. It doesn't seem to have any conductive properties, so it doesn't mess up your, your circuits. With the LEDs, one thing I learned last time is you just need a little tiny dot. Little tiny dot of glue on it. These aren't really going to be what's holding this all together. We're going to be sewing it. And later on, I'm going to have to remove these annoying little threads of glue. I think you can tell by the way I'm doing this that I have some obsessive compulsive neatness disorder. Um, I wasn't always this way, but I learned that if I externalize uh, order, then I can have a disorderly mind. So I've got all of my projects arrayed around me and everything is in its place. I have a little maker space that people come into on Saturdays. Between four and ten people are there, and they all know that I'm very crazy about the tools live in their nests. Every tool has a place, and when we're all done, you better put it back in its place, or you will find that I will do it for you. Anyway, um, so I've got it glued, and the next step, um, I believe, let me double check, this is to use the thread to connect the positive. So I'm going to connect the, the, the positive poles here to the oh dear, did I put the positive to the positive here? Okay. So now conductive thread, scissors. Needle. I'm going to get a big piece of conductive thread here. This may become unwieldy, so we'll just have to see how that goes. You know, if you think, you have to think of your thread like the traces on a printed circuit board or like a wire, it's what connects things. So you want to make sure it connects things that need to be connected and doesn't connect things that shouldn't be connected. So here we've got these glued together and uh, careful not to step on this or to sew this to the back of anything. I'm going to start with the positive. Paul, you got this going? You got it going, okay. Michelle, you don't uh, have the kit. Evan, ah, uh, heck. Okay, one thing I forgot is that if you don't, if you're not going to knot the thread immediately, haven't been soldering today, so it's okay to lick my fingers. Um, you got to hold on to it. And you're going through, okay, so. Here we go. So I kind of learned to feel my way around hooking these things up from the bottom. Come on, where are you? Where are you? All right.
Okay, how am I going to tie a knot here? Okay, I'm going to tie a knot on the other side. So I'm going to put, poke this through here. Pull it through. And not one end of it. Uh huh. And start over again. So, uh, you know, f feel free to talk while I'm doing this. Michelle, have you been playing at all with wearables? Yeah, I uh, actually just posted a YouTube link. Uh, the reason I'm not building along is that I only have, I seem to have many of the batteries, and then, but no tiny left. So I use my one in this project that I made, and I post uh -huh. the YouTube video. Um, so I've done a little bit of that. My next step is to try to use um, like the the bigger this guy. This yeah, is the one that um, intimidates me. <laughs> the, the the programmable kind yeah. of USB port. Yeah, but check it out. You can buy this. I really like. You can get the prototyping. Um, have you seen this, guys? You can get the lily pad with the clips, the snaps. So you can sew down the one with snaps, and then program this uh, the lily pad, put, stick it on, and take it off. I like that because then I'm I'm not committing a whole lily pad to my, you know, new felt skills, and I'm just learning to crochet as well. And I want to do some crochet because I think the thread will hide nicely in the nice big woolly crochet threads. Oh, uh-huh. Yeah, the, one thing that's happening is that uh, the threads are kind of visible. Um, yeah, which is interesting. Like in this Pac-Man project, I kind of made the thread look like the pieces that Pac-Man eats up as he goes along in the game. So you can kind of, you know, I think the thread becomes part, if, if it's visible, it becomes part of the artwork. Yeah, I can see that. So, right, so we... Do you, do you draw a line on it for where it's going to go? Exactly. So before I make it, I oh here, I think I even I have my little projects all here. I always do like a, I draw first on a piece of cardboard what I'm going to do, and I sketch out like a. I'm bad at getting the positive negatives mixed up, and I know that moment that you're talking about when you glue it down, right? You're like, this is the moment where we commit. Yeah. <laughs> So I draw it out first, and I've also learned too that I need to. It's useful for me if I test out the before sewing. If I test out with, um, to make sure that the everything works, because I discovered like we were talking in the chat that purple, my favorite color, is the least likely to work. Yes. In these projects. That's why I I did not choose the purple. Mm hmm. But. Then to counterbalance that, I got this big battery holder. Can everyone see that? Because then this will be able to hold a double A battery or a triple A. Oh, so won't uh -huh. that be better? Won't that make it work? What do we think? Um, I think. Um, it depends on the on how much voltage the LED wants to take. Right. Uh, Ken, you got an opinion on that? Yeah, and and it's um, yeah. So with your two AA batteries, you're going to get three volts across it, which is um, I think less than what you're getting on your lithium cell. So, um, however, what the batteries will give you is it'll, they'll have a higher current draw. Now, lithium cells have are self-current limiting, 
That's why you don't need ballast resistors for them. So it may be that um, the battery will just allow the LED to draw more current, and you'll see it better. I think, I think honestly, the purple ones, I think, it's a, I think it's a project context that is, you know, if you can handle, so I, I, I so the answer is, I don't know, but you might be able, might be able to get it brighter with the, using the, the, um, the um, alkaline battery instead of the lithium battery, uh, even at the same voltage. But the other thing is, you know, the purples don't work in comparison to the other colors, but if you use them by themselves in something that's a low light situation, um, they'd probably be very beautiful, I don't know. Um, so, so that's that, that's the other and and um, so that that's my answer to that, which is no answer at all, other than try it. <laughs> but are you saying can, no? I think that's a perfectly acceptable answer. Are you saying can I need two of these then? Well, how many how many batteries does that hold? One or two? Just one. Okay, so so a um, yeah a double A cell gives you one point five volts, and these LEDs usually need more than that. I had this, you just, like, that's a good misconception that you just helped me erase because I just assumed that battery would be bigger and more powerful. I didn't really think about it. Well, hmm. it, 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 voltage is not power, so it is more powerful. You think of, think of voltage as like pressure, right? So it's, it's something that, that, um, that's pushing it's it's a force of, of, of pushing the electrons through the through the circuit. Um, power is how much work it does, or how much work it can do. So um, so um, the the um, at a lower voltage, you can do this have the same power if you're driving more current. So that would mean your resistance would be lower or something else. So there there there. So the the answer to your question is yes. That that double A battery is capable of delivering more power, that is, it actually has more, more stuff in it, um, more electrical, electrochemical energy in it to do work and it, um, than, than the lithium cell. The, lithi the lithium cell is good because it's small and you can wear it, more, you know, it, it, it's flat and all, and all of that. So, um, so your I mean, what you said is right, it, it is more powerful, but the problem is that if the um, if the voltage isn't high enough, it's not pushing with enough pressure, and so if if you put two of them together, and if you notice, mostly most of the circuits you see um, AA batteries, and they're not using one; they're using two or four. Um, you can add the voltages up. So with two of them, they're pushing that, you know twice as hard, and with four of them, they're pushing four times as hard, and um, and so they can they can um, ca cause the current to flow. Um, it's like what what what's a, what's a good analogy? Oh, turning on you know turning on uh, it's hose. It's a, like a hose, right? If you've got bad water pressure in your house, um, the the hose won't won't um, shoot as far as if you've got good water pressure. Even though the hose is the same diameter and all of that, um, and the better pressure you have, the more water comes out. So the same thing with electrons. So that's the that's the long the long answer, but so you, you're right. It has more power in it, but it doesn't have the force to force that power through the LED. No, that's really good. That's super mm -hmm. good. Now, can I, I tell me? You, you said something about uh, uh, lithium batteries don't need resistors. Um, yeah, yeah. You know, the, an the answer is that that's a risky thing to say, but yes, um, <laughs> lithium batteries are naturally current limiting. So the reason the reason that you put the you you Put resistors in circuits with LEDs um, is to um, basically slow down the current flow because LEDs will burn up, you know, if too much current flows through them. And what and usually um, in an ideal situation, a certain voltage going to a certain resistance will deliver a certain current, and your AA battery will behave in that way. Um, lithium batteries, um, because of the, their chemistry. Just can't produce it. it our, our current limited, so at some point, no matter what voltage, nominal voltage they have, they just won't pump out any more electrons. And so, um, so you know, if the likelihood that it'll just, you know, the battery will just, you know, your your AA battery going into a going into a short circuit 
will you know will heat that wire up as much as it can and then burn itself out pretty quickly. Your lithium battery won't do it. So that's the. Uh, thank you, so. thank you for that, Ken. Uh, <laughs> the ob observant uh, per person will see that I did what I warned us that I had learned not to do, which is I had sewn the front to the back. So I just uh, took all of my stitches out, and I'm going to look on the bright side and think that I'm going to do it more quickly the second time. <laughs> so. And I can uh, entertain us all with my neophyte questions. Yes, <laughs> each time. please do. Okay, so I this is my project that's similar to this project, and underneath Pac-Man is the Lily Tiny. But what I don't understand is that sometimes these two lights flash a nice bright red, and sometimes they don't. And I don't understand, like, I nothing is changing on the circuit. Why is that? Could it be that there is any kind of loose connection? Is it? Does it happen when it's moving or when it's still? It happens when it's still. If I turn it off and then I turn it on again, sometimes it's really faint and sometimes it's really bright. But that we're thinking that could be a loose connection. So, do you are you really careful then when you sew these? Like, how do you ensure a good connection? Like, does the does the well, I I I try to to sew them two or three times around each connection, if possible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're finicky things, aren't they? So I'm I'm starting from the beginning and tying it down. Paul, you must be way ahead by now. Uh, let's see your work, Paul. No, I'm 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 behind you actually. <laughs> That's probably. Can we see a progress update? <laughs> it's very very. <laughs> it's just like this. Okay, we're gonna we're gonna try again here. Nice. There we go. Very good. As as Michelle knows, if you've messed it up, then the only thing to do is to try to remember not to make the same mistake the next time. So, did I sew it to the back? No, not yet. So, I'm I'm sewing the positives together here. Maybe it, it, it helps for me to turn it over and see what I'm doing. Yeah, when I, when I was working on my wearable circuit, um, I kept putting it down on something that was conductive, <laughs> so it would stop working for a while um, until I realized what I was doing. But um, last night I was um, at a meeting with a woman sewing rows and rows of... Um, LED um, of RGB LEDs onto her backpack, and um, we were discussing ways of getting around that loose connection problem when you're using conductive thread, because you can't solder it. <laughs> you really want to, but you can't. Um, and the only solution that we came up with, although we haven't tried yet, um, is to use bare conductive paint and kind of blop it on. So, so you know, basically, you have your phys your physical joint by by you know sewing it really tight, and then you just seal it with beer conductive. That's um, a great idea. Yeah. So we haven't tried it yet, but that might be a way of uh, assuring against the loose connections by gluing it on as well as something. Right. Yeah, that's really good. And then I guess the only thing is, is that you'd want to make sure then that wherever you were using that bare conductive wasn't on a part that would bend too much. To make it crack. That's true. That it, it does crack. It does get brittle. You're right. Yeah, yeah. So it has to be kind of like Howard's doing the stuff on on sort of like the decolletage, right? Like the upper uh, shoulder, chest area. So it's not going to have a lot of. It's not going to bend a lot there. Right. So it can be strategic about where your sparkling goodness goes. 
<laughs> no wrists or elbows. That's right. <laughs> there so, will be no shiny knees. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, so this broke. Oh, that happens to me all the time. I, and isn't that a pain? Yeah. So, so I'm, I'm going to continue to sew this and then, you know, thinking in terms of it being a little bit like solder, I can just start the next one from the same connection and we should be in shape. But i got to finish this one off. So when that, happened, when that happened to me, I put a little bit of, I sew it on the, I try to pull the thread back through on the non-visible side of the project, and then I put a little bit of glue down, and then I continue on so that you don't have a piece of thread, you know what I mean, sticking up through the nice part. I'll just leave it sticking out through the, bo the bottom. Yeah. Depends where you end up, I guess. I'm going to have to can we only tie this thread off here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to tie it here. Can I do this? Oh man. You know, pretty soon my eyes and my fingers are not going to be good enough to do this, but for the time being. Okay, so I've got this knotted here. And I'm going to go back to the thread, and fortunately, I did not misplace the needle. I probably shouldn't be licking the thread, should I? Okay, so I am sewing the positive side again. Oh no, did it come un untied? I may glue that all together there. You think that uh, that's a good strategy, huh, Michelle? Yeah, that was Ken's idea. I like that. Uh, oh, to glue it down in the back? Yes. Yeah. On the side you don't see? Yeah. But the thread is slightly brittle, isn't it? Yeah. You know, you just, uh, you got to work with materials to sort of internalize their quirks. I mean, you got to pull things hard enough that they really adhere. How are you making it, Paul? So you think I should put a glob of glue on this right here to make I sure this so, stuff maybe. doesn't maybe. come oh, unravel? Just, uh... Nice. Oh, cool, Paul. Okay, I'm going to I'm going to do the glue strategy. Still missing all the LEDs. <laughs> yeah, that's what so I. We, we got time. <laughs> I used up all my LEDs, I couldn't fill them on this time. Okay, I've got a blob of, of glue in here. And pieces of thread glued to my fingers. <laughs> Oh, 
and I'm going to proceed on the assumption that I'm going to end up with a complete circuit here. So this needs to go over to the positive terminal of the tiny Well, I got further than I was before. Am I not gluing? Okay, I'm not making the same mistake. Okay, so to make sure I've got a good connection here. How are you doing, Paul? Have you got the that those first two positives on the battery connector sewn together yet? Well, yeah, I just have the the battery and the tiny connected together. So I'm missing all the LEDs so far. Okay, so now I am going to. not this here, go to the next step which is connecting to the LEDs. I really should get myself a threading device. So I'd, I'd like to try to get them through three times on each connection. And it kind of gets a little hard to pull it through each time. Now I am not going to sew it to the back. Okay, we're going to hope that that's a good knot. And then the next step is to go from what to happened here? What happened here? What did I do here? So, I think we're going to revert to the glue gun again. Except I think I'm going to hold it down with something other than my finger. And I'll put the hot glue on it. Boy, this is a globby mess on the inside. So 
I'm going to let that dry a little bit. Boy, um, it's going to be a race to get this done. I don't know whether I will, but the next step is to go from one of these to the positive. End is that the next step is what? Okay. So I'm going to go from the positive side, which is the one we said was on the top. Oh, I did it kind of backwards, didn't I? Has anyone played with the Adafruit version, the uh, Flora? Are you still with me? Hello? Still with you. No, I haven't played with it. Okay. So. I've just tried the, the Gemma, which is like a version of, it's almost like the Lily Tiny, but you can program it that I haven't been able to get it to, to work on my Windows machine, something with the drivers. Ew. Who makes the Gemma? Adafruit. Oh, so that's like, they've, they've got a couple? Yeah, it's it the, has the same process uh, microcontroller as the Lily Tiny, and it has a small USB uh, on it, so you can attach it to your computer and program it via the normal Arduino EDU. But I haven't been able to get it to work. Okay, so my objective here is to not cross any wires, but to connect this So this is what the Gemma looks like. Uh-huh. Can you move that closer to the camera a little bit? Can you see it? Let me let me put you in the main screen here. Aha. Uh -huh. Okay. It's like a slightly larger version of this tiny here. Yep. Okay, so I may have used up most of the hour, but I am going to get at least the first pin connected. And what option are you going for? Are you going for one will blink on and off, so that's number two, or heartbeat I'm pattern going, one? I'm, I'm, I'm starting with number three. That's the random fade. You know what? You're... Your guess is as good as mine. I'm, I, I'm, mere, I'm reading from the website. I'm providing okay. a supporting role right now. Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> to make up for not building along. 
How about you, Paul? What are you going for? Which option? Would you like me to read them to you? Uh, well, mine is connected to... I can't hear you. You're on mute. Okay, I'm going to try to tie this one down here. I look, um, it looks like I'm in danger here of crossing wires if I'm not careful. Mm. So, more glue. Good thing about this glue is that it dries really quickly. Might as well glue all my knots since I'm doing it. I don't know whether this is accepted practice. Uh, it probably isn't. Howard, Howard, we are creating accepted practice as we yes. go. This is all yeah. new. <laughs> yeah, I second that. We'll um, and I think you're avoiding short circuiting, right? Yes, that's that's the the plan. Mm. And that's you, a great idea. So it's, and it, the clothes fold and bend, right? So you have to make sh like it's even the chances of they them folding on top of each other. You have to kind of prevent that too. Yeah, I chose a, uh, as you noted. I I chose a part of this that bends the least. Mm -hmm. So now I'm going to take number two are you connecting each LED connecting to each different po each um, <laughs> pin to the positive pin of a, a, a separate LED so Right now, the objective is to get each positive pull of each LED connected to one of the numbered pins. And then I will complete the circuit by taking the last negative and then connecting it to the battery pack. So, um, are you all prepared to hang out for a little bit longer tonight? Yeah, you bet. It's what I do. All right. Yeah, I'm cool. I'm hanging. I, th I want to see an update on Paul, please. You might have frozen out. Um, I've seen it happen a few times on Hangouts. Oh, there you go. Hey, there you go. Got an LED on there. Nice. All right. Awesome. Getting there. Good progress. All right. So where am I? I've got this. I'm working on the second one here. Being careful not to sew it onto the back of my coat, which I've done before. Okay, and so now I'm going 
to take a couple of stitches here to get it to What I am hoping is the positive pole of the LED. Tell me when I'm out of camera range and you can't see what I'm doing here. Ah, hell. I uh, lost my glueness here. So I'm going to re glue this. Glue all over the place. Okay, a little messier than I would like it to be. Not so easy to get it through this hole, so I'm going to put it through the top. One more time. So now I'm going to try to knock this off. I'm out of time range, I understand. What is going on here? You know, I got something caught on something here. Something didn't happen right. What, what did I do wrong here? How did I mess this up so badly? Uh, 
I have really, I think, messed this up, and I'm not even understanding how. Oh boy. Okay. So what can be salvaged here? Okay, somehow I have Okay, and I'll see what I've done here. Is I have managed to lose a lot of my thread and see don't know whether there's enough to get back to where I need to go, but I'm going to give it a try. Boy, it's clumsy when you're first learning how to do something. Nope, that's not right. And then always a bit harder with an, with an audience, too. <laughs> uh, yeah. Well, I just don't want to, this to touch the, the negative. Yeah, that's the that's the that's the big problem I think with the um, conductive thread is I mean what other circuit do you build where you don't have insulators on your wires? <laughs> yeah, you know, you know, I don't care how you're building it. Um, you know, we're back to the old. I don't know if you you know the, the old. I, I I live in a house that's um, 120 years old. And if I go up into my attic, I still see the old post um, electrical system where they use bare wire that was just Yikes. mounted on these ceramic posts that were just far enough apart, right? <laughs> but you couldn't ever get them close together. So, uh, fortunately, the people who electrified it properly didn't take the old wiring, or at least left some of the old wiring in for a museum piece, I think. That is a really good point, though, right? Because most other stuff, uh, wires has plastic around it, right? Right, or, right. and and or, or else, you know, you you use um, shrink tubing or something. In other words, if you're working with a, a gauge of wire that's that's thick, whenever you can, you put you put shrink tubing or something around it to, to just to keep it from shorting on itself. And then you're working on cloth, which naturally bends. <laughs> right. Okay. There's a lot to work with there. Yeah. I wonder. Two connected. Only two more to go. Good debugging. Try to look at uh, uh, at the positive side of this. <laughs> yeah, I think if there's one thing I've learned from messing with Arduino stuff, it's that um, it not working as normal. Yeah. I don't I don't know what gummed you up. Like what? I, I I couldn't tell exactly where the thread was going. What what was the I stumbling the point there? Was that I I I thought by putting the positives at the top, it would be easier. And I wasn't. If I had thought it through, I would have thought, well, I'm trying to connect the positives to the pins, so put them at the bottom, so they're they're upside down from where they ought to be. Okay. Oh, right, so yeah. now I am going to try to connect the third of my four. Mm 
Uh, this time I started this way, so I can knot it at the top. Yeah, the, the, other, the other thing that's really different when I'm sewing wearables is, you know, when I'm working on, on a bench anywhere, I've got my, my voltmeter and my resistance tester and usually an oscilloscope nearby. But the point is, you're, I'm, you're always checking your, your, cert, your connections with your, with your meter. Um, and you know, it just doesn't, doesn't feel right when you, you've got an embroidery hoop and thread and you're, and you're, and you're sewing to, to have that, that stuff by. But I think that might be a, a useful thing in, in your wearable sewing kit. Oh, there it is. Michelle's got yeah, right it's, it's true. Like that, I use that on my second project because it's, it's like a little bit heartbreaking when you have to rip out all the sewing uh, yeah. and start again. Yeah. Um, so I'd rather, like, and that's why I started, because I, I don't have enough of a background with um, the, like, it takes me a lot to think through the positive and negative leads. So I have to draw a picture and then test it. Because these are kind of, like, they're not expensive parts, but they're expensive parts. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I don't, want, I don't want to get overconfident here, but the third one is... Coming Feels along good. better than the, the first two. And Paul, I'm sending you encouraging uh, thoughts right now. <laughs> yeah, how are you doing, Paul? How are you doing on this? I'm still uh, still uh, a little bit behind you, Howard. Well, that, to makes, catch up. that makes me feel better. <laughs> Okay, let's see if I can tie this one. You're out of the screen a little bit. If, okay. I know if you can. <laughs> Thanks. Okay, how am I now? Yeah, okay. You're good. I'm going to try to tie this one here. Um, Ken, you mentioned oscilloscope, is that right? Yeah. I have learned a little bit about using a multimeter, but nothing about using an oscilloscope. I don't even know if I'm spelling it right. A, does it start with an A or an S? <laughs> o, o S C I L L. As an oscillate? Yes, uh huh. All right, root points for the root word. <laughs> and, and I think that that's what Hewlett and Packard started making when they. Have their little garage. That, that, really? that is true. What is it? What is this? What is a, a You see it. It's that screen that gives you a waveform when you connect it to something electrical. And I went to Reed College, and one of the people who went to Reed College started a company in Portland called Tektronix, which makes oscilloscopes and he made a lot of money and and bought us some nice buildings. Yeah. Yes, All right, I've only got one more to do. One more to do. That uh, for the positives. So the, so the voltmeters will let you, you know, see if you've got positive or negative voltage and stuff. But when you're working with digital signals, like um, like a, a signal line for the Arduino, which is supposed to be, um, you know, carrying, so um, in information other than just a, a, a positive or negative voltage or something, um, or you want it to be changing with time and it's not doesn't seem to be doing it, you can use the oscilloscope to plot voltage versus time so you can see what's going on or you can see um, you can slow down the digital the flow of digital bits to see if there are really bits flowing on there or just noise or something else or nothing so um, that's what, so that's when you'd use an oscilloscope when you want to plot voltage versus time and see um, time variant signals um, and like I said, I use you use it when you're look when you're trying to debug like where your digital signals might be be going or not going, or um, if they look like they're shaped wrong, like right? they're little 
their little corners aren't square enough or something like that, so you have to worry about something. Like that. And, uh, most of the most of the stuff you're dealing we're dealing with here, you know, um, even if they do change with time, they change slowly. So um, the vault meter will be able to pick up that and register that voltage before it changes. I dropped my needle on the floor, so <laughs> instead of getting on my hands and knees, I'm going for a second needle. <laughs> Just remember that you did that later. <laughs> don't, don't, don't go barefoot, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Safety shoes. Um, so an os oscill oscilloscope? Oscilloscope. Am I saying it right? Yes, yeah. So plotting voltage versus time. So what's the relationship between voltage, voltage, voltage to time and bits? Well, OK. Um, in, in fact, bits are just the smallest piece of information you can have. It's one or zero. But um, when bits travel, you know, when, when, you, when you plug that USB port into your Arduino and the bits flow down that wire, um, they're, tr they're, they're converted into um, changes in voltage over, over time. So that's basically how it's done. And um, the way the Arduino outputs analog signals is it's not really very clean analog. It's just kind of fudged. Um, it's what's called pulse width modulation, which means they have um, it's, it's a, the voltage gets switched on and then switched off. And how long it stays on and off determines what the average voltage is. And so something like an LED will kind of average that out and give you a, a, a steady state at, at a certain level. So um, if you go in with your voltmeter, it also has a slow response, so it'll do that averaging out if, it, if it's right, if it's um, capable of doing that. If you look at it at the oscilloscope, you could actually see the pulse and its width. So you could see it getting, you know, wider and or narrower and, and being you know, um, switched on more than it's switched off. Um, and so um, you can, again, so when you're sending bits down a wire, they they have to be converted into electrical signals because that's the only thing they can travel down the wire. Um, and so you can see those bits, those, those, those pulses, those varying electrical signals go down. It's hard to know what they're saying, but you can see that, you can see that they look like bits going down rather than something else, rather than um, you know, the latest Beyonce track or something like that. Right? Yeah, I can imagine that it would be hard to decode. So do you just look for irregularities? Well, um, we, well, I mean, no. Well, again, if you're if you're worried about shorted circuits and the kind of stuff we're doing, you just to see what you if what you're looking at looks like it's a, a bit stream, or a or a solid a steady state, or um, audio signals. Sound signals tend to have smooth smooth edges, and digital signals tend to have sharp corners. So you know you could tell the kind of stuff that's going down there. Um, digital signals happen much faster, so you'd set your oscilloscope to uh, a faster speed to see the um, basically a smaller a time interval on your x-axis to see the faster signals, so you can see the frequencies that are going on. So um, you know, so th th I mean, I, I guess what I'm trying to do while while Howard's sewing is is talk about what, when wh when I when I would use an oscilloscope versus just a voltmeter because you know we're talking about one or two orders of magnitude and extra cost. So, <laughs> so it's uh, um, but again, um, and, and I think Evan does a lot. If, when, if you work a lot in the in the in either in audio or in radio, you know, you're doing um, wireless stuff, and so you want to see. Um, your signals and your signals being modulated, then oscilloscope is absolutely necessary to see the to see what's going on in those kind of signals. So, so I, you know what a, you, do you know what a sine wave and a square wave look like? I uh, yes, I think so. Okay, so the sine wave is kind of like it it's like a curvy thing that goes up and down. Yes. That makes, that makes sense. Yes, it does. And then the square wave, it's like it goes up and then it goes across and then it goes down, so it's square looking, right? Okay. So yes. there's a a little horizontal line at the at the top, and then a vertical line, and then there's a little horizontal line at the bottom. Yes, so I understand. Kind of like the horizontal is your time axis. Then the amount of of time that the the length of the horizontal line at the top is the amount of time that your that the voltage is on, and 
the, the, the next wave, the amount of time that the horizontal at the bottom is the, the length of the horizontal at the bottom equals the, the length that that's on. So the pulse width modulation means that things like LEDs um, can fluctuate so rapidly, faster than, than humans can see, that you can make, uh, let's say, the amount of time that it's off uh, longer by making that bottom horizontal line longer. And what the effect is, is that you'll see a dimmer LED. Um, but if you want it to be brighter, then you make that amount of time that the voltage is on, the higher of the two horizontal lines longer. So that's pulse width modulation as I understand it. Yeah. And well, uh, a square wave sounds like a clarinet, and a sine wave sounds more like a flute. <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've got my last positive wing sewn on here. Yeah, yeah. It, it, again, if you um, if you listen to a square wave, it has sort of a clarinetty sort of sound. Um, if you listen to it, and uh, a sine wave is just the pure the pure tone. I'm. I now need to like YouTube a clarinet sound. And what is the other one you're comparing it to? Well, I said it's more like a flute or a, or a pure pipe because pipes mm. you tend to resonate just at the at one at a very dominant fundamental frequency. Okay, so I've got all of my positives connected. Next, mm. I'm afraid I need to do something with all of the negatives. Okay, and so the next, the negative tra traces. How's your progress, Paul? Oh, this may be easier. And you're out of range there, Howard. Oops. Okay, I'm trying to see what I'm doing here, so... Okay, now I want to connect. I, I want to make a really long piece of thread. And I'm going to connect the negative parts of the... Are we able to see this here? What are we doing here? Okay, I'm going to, to get a long piece of thread and I'm going to connect the negative poles of the battery pack, and then I'm going to go from, oh, no. No, yeah, I'm fine, I'm fine, I think. And no, I see a break. I see a break. Dang. Well, better to catch it now. Okay, so I'm going to have to redo that last one. But the uh, what I'm supposed to do next is to connect the two negative poles of the the battery to each of the negatives. But first I have to redo this. Oh my gosh, it's oh, we, we've been going for almost an hour and a half. Um, do we want to continue this one later? <laughs> Are you all interested in a part two of this in a, a few weeks? Or shall we leave that as an exercise? I am getting faster at this as I go along, as I mess it up repeatedly. I am learning to do it a little better. Yeah, yeah, Howard. It's it's the basic sewing that gets me to. Yeah. <laughs> if I have wires and soldering, <laughs> I'm good. But um, 
and then you know, and then the complexity of dealing with the thread, you know, um, and building the circuit that way. I just, I hope it just, I hope it gets easier with practice. I really do. It it is getting easier, but I started out with the baseline of being so clumsy. Yeah. Okay, so I've learned to hold that thread so I don't cut it through. And then I'm going to pull this through and tie it. So Howard, back in the hippie days you didn't get you didn't get into embroidering work shirts or anything? No. no. Um, you know, I've I've come to me messing with stuff with my hands kind of late in life. Mm -hmm. Although I've painted and sculpted my whole life, I never messed with tools at all, like power tools, and still I, until I started uh, building big things for Burning Man. And so oh, cool. I lost my fear of power tools. I have now spent way too much money in the last two months building myself a complete wood shop. So I've got a, a comp compound miter saw, a table saw, a router. And I went out and bought a bunch of wood, which is very cool to buy. Yeah. And uh, I'm learning to make stuff. I took a, I, a, a class at the local high school, has an after-hours class in woodworking with a fantastic teacher. So that was really great. So your, your high school still has a wood shop? That's wonderful. Oh, it's a fantastic wood shop. It's yeah. got, you know, a, a central dust collection system and then every possible tool you might want. I have don't have very much room on my property, so I ended up installing a um, six by eight foot shed, and outside the shed I've got a, a piece of plywood on top of uh, a couple of saw horses, so I have to move my table saw out there every time I want to use it. Okay. But in the shed, you know, somebody gave me a book called Men and Sheds. <laughs> I don't know whether you've ever seen that. It's, it's no, actually, it sounds great. I'm, I'm getting one. Right? It's a British book. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, when I go out in my shed, I've got a little Bluetooth speaker. I turn the lights on, and I am in my own world, and time disappears. Cool. That's awesome. I'm totally getting, like... <laughs> I, I can think of a couple of men in my life that would really benefit from men's shit. Right? <laughs> that is, like, I'm going to just put my order in right now. <laughs> it's great. They have this stuff called Tough Shed. I don't know whether it's national, but for a couple of thousand dollars, they will move the, sh they will assemble the shed on your property. Wow. Cool. And paint it and make sure that it, the foundation is situated properly. Um, okay, I'm almost finished redoing the one that I had messed up. The last one that I messed up. Most recent one I had messed up. Oh no. Okay. And this calls for the glue gun. My so, dear friends, I am going to peel off. It's 10.30. Right. I, I feel it's pumpkin hour. Thank yeah, you. Thank you so much, Michelle. Oh, hang it, hang it yeah, nice, Michelle. nice to see you all. We'll see you again soon, okay? Soon. Yeah. Bye. Good luck. Good luck, Paul. Bye, everyone. Bye. Okay, so I'm going to wait for this last one to for the glue to dry. And I'm not going to go on too, too much forever. Forgot to say goodbye to Evan. Well, he didn't. He didn't say goodbye. He typed it, and you were busy sewing. So yes, there is exclusive. Excuse me. Man, after all this, this better work. Hey, Paul, how's it coming? Oh. You still working it? Okay, 
I've got a, a longer than usual piece of thread here. Um. Yep, I'm going to try to connect my... I'm not quite finished, but I've got two LEDs working. Oh, all right. But the first one, I did the mistake of putting the purple one in the front, and it's, <laughs> and it's very weak. It's a very weak one. But I'm, yeah. I'm planning on continuing to the, the, the last two ones here. Oh, this thread is a little bit weak. I'm going to get another big piece of thread here. Perseverance, all important. But it's nice to have a sewing circle, isn't it? Where yeah, we can sit it and is. chat. And <laughs> There's something about that that the women figured out long ago, right? So, um, Ken, have you had any luck in getting people to show up for your geek outs? Oh, on and on and off, it's it's really tapered off lately. So I, I'm I'm re I'm rethinking the strategy. Um, it, you know, just maybe maybe having more solid topics. You, it, what's been neat, Howard, is I've had some wonderful sort of one-on-one -on -one and two-on-one -on -one conversations with yeah. different parents. Um, you know, fortunately, um, you know, and, and they they ha they they take one of two forms. One is just a parent who's really wanting to get into it um, and then I you know, have the benefit of just hanging around a bunch of, you know, like even more than you, I mean, I've been an engineer but um, being a parent is something completely different and I'm totally not an educator. I, mean, I, I did teach college for a while but it was only upper division and grad school so that doesn't count um, when you're talking about you know, younger kids. And but I've learned learned a lot just by hanging out and, and knowing people um, with you and other people, and so I can impart some of that knowledge and get get parents excited about just the resources that are out there. Um, and then sometimes there's some you know there's some issues you know um, basically um, the, you know issues often it's just with schools you know that um, either the school the school's concept of what Technology is and what it should be is either very limited, um, or um, overly restrictive, or you know how do you get a school um, going? My son's fortunate enough that um, that his school hired a technology teacher, which is somebody who knew stuff, to set up their program. But too many of the schools I hear from the parents is that they'll say, "Oh, we got to teach STEAM," and then they'll just try to re repurpose existing teachers who don't have a clue. Um, uh -huh. And these are wonderful, smart people who are very who are very motivated. But honestly, you know, um, there's only so much you can teach them in a two week course or a one week course or a weekend or something like that. So it's kind of repeating the same mistake that was made with computers in schools when it first started, which yeah. is. Uh, you don't include some training for the teachers, they end up being useless. Yeah, or and very frustrated because they're 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 smart, motivated people, and you know they they, they you know it's so um, and you know, this the um, in I think I've mentioned before in searching for a, a middle school for my son, um, we visited a lot. You know, you you kiss a lot of frogs before you find the prince, right? And um, I, I, there were several occasions where um, federal money or something went into some beautiful equipment, and the, um, either the program wasn't in place or the, um, the they didn't go out and therefore hire an instructor who might who might ha have the, have both the, the experience and the teaching chops to um, to make that to make that equipment valuable. Which is why when you mentioned even that wood shop, two things are implied. One is they sell the wood shop, and the other thing is they ha obviously have a very good wood shop teacher. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, excited. So great. I mean, yeah. so I went to this adult evening class, yeah. but you know, here's somebody who's been teaching high school kids how to use dangerous power tools for a long yeah. time. So he kind of has a method of. Uh, and the thing about dangerous power tools is 
um, it really requires a methodical approach and focused attention. Um, at the beginning, it's very confusing because you don't you don't know how you. It's like the sewing stuff. You haven't been through the motions enough to to kind of get where do you put your fingers and 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 the rest of it. But uh, he had us build. We had uh, eight three-hour sessions once a week, and um, we ended up uh, making a cutting board and a box, and um, they were very cool. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. I see you made some joinery as well to make the box. Um, well, it was kind of joinery. It's just, um, you know, a 45-degree angle, and it's all. Yeah. It, we used a router to fit the top and the bottom, and one thing that I had not known about was uh, okay. Let's shoot. Um, was the the way wood expands. Um, yeah. So you, if you're going to make a box, you need to have the top and the bottom, in a kind of slot where where the the wood can expand and contract without cracking things. So yeah. so that's where a router comes in. You make these grooves and you make everything fit in, and then you glue it all together. Um, and then after it's glued together, you, you, you make a top by sawing it off with the table saw. <laughs> That's cool. That was really cool. I, 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 did, I did take wood shop, I think, back in high school, but that was the last time I had it formally. Um, I, well, wood's a wonderful material. It's, yeah. it's so sensual, it looks so nice, and it smells so good. And... Okay, yeah. so... Now, presumably, what I'm doing now will go more quickly because I'm simply connecting all of the neck. Oh, hell, I dropped my second needle. And this is a, a comedy of errors here. Ah, I see it. And, of course... If I pull back far enough, I'll pull my my uh, headset out. Anyway, what you can see here is that we're now going to go around the perimeter. And connect the negative poles. I think we might be in sight of getting something to work here, lest I be too overconfident. Okay. Okay, now I'm going to try to get this to the next negative pole without crossing a wire somewhere. which requires looking at it. I'm closing in on it, guys. Excellent.
Okay, now's the time where I don't want to cross the wire here. Let's see, there's some. I've made lots of opportunities to make short circuits here. So I'm going to look at the directions and see. OK. One more loop through, and I'm going to cut and knot this. And glue it, because I made a kind of scrambled mess in here. Now this is exciting. I'm getting to the part where it's going to work or not. Okay. I've got this tied. We'll now glue it. Where was that? Man, it's a good thing this glue is not conductive. This better work because uh, taking it apart is not going to be much fun. <laughs> I, I had not been thinking about that. So right now I'm waiting for the glue to dry. You can see what a gluey mess it is on the inside. Mm -hmm. Fortunately, it doesn't take long for glue to dry. And then I'm going to take the battery and put it in and switch it on. Please, the moment of truth. Oh, my God. Oh, gosh, it works. Or something works. I see something that. is working. Yeah. It's blinking. One of them is. Okay. Oh, I'm looking at the inside. No, this is the outside. Did I put these upside down? Oh, man. At least two of them are on, right? Oh, you put the LEDs towards the material? Yeah. <laughs> Just cut a hole on the other side. Cool. Well, well, you can see that the throbbing one is working. Yeah. One of them is working. Second one is working when I move it. Yeah. Oh man, I glued them all in upside down. But you know, that was the side that had the labels on it. Well, yeah, yeah, wait a minute. Maybe, maybe I can just turn them over. Well, why aren't the others working? Okay. So, I've got some work to do here. Well, okay, but you know that your lily, your lily tiny E is working, and you know that you connected yeah. the other things. It's probably just bad connections. I mean, yeah. I'm just going to yeah. cool. redo them. I'm going to have to redo this whole thing. Very cool. Oh, well. Well, so, there we go. <laughs> You're well, two out of four, ain't that? <laughs> two out of four working. Oh, look at you. He's got, he's got three going. All right. All right. Yeah, I, ha I, I have the purple one, but then I, I, 
I tried to reinforce it because it's so weak, and then it stopped yeah. it together. Yeah. Well, you know what will what will happen um, is because um, when I was using the purple one, it's faint, but when the others are going, the current is so much less that it you just don't see it at all. Hmm. I'm so. going to stop the broadcast.